Hello, you're listening to Asda FM Live, and today we're talking to Graham Marshall. Graham is in fact a truck driver for our very own Asda, but he is also a budding singer-songwriter with a fascinating story. Hello, Graham. How are we today? How are you doing? Yes, not too bad, thanks. Not too bad. Right, thanks for taking the time to talk to us, Graham. Could you give us a bit of background into your past and how you have come to be here today? Ooh, how long have you got? Basically, I picked up the guitar at 15 and was so intimidated by the people I was listening to that uh, I decided to write my own songs and pretty much carried on from there. It has been a colourful career of non-starts and success and roller coaster kind of thing, but uh, in 2010 I was picked up by Bill O'Coin, the manager that discovered Kiss, which led to me doing the film, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, he's basically gave me the drive to carry on and believe in myself. But uh, yeah, it's just I'm just a singer-songwriter that's had a few crazy adventures and I'm keeping going, yeah. <laughs> right, well, fantastic. What age did you start playing the guitar, do you say? Yeah, uh, about 14 or 15. OK, and yeah. uh, been a bit of a roller coaster from there, has it? Oh, indeed, yes. Yes, I won't get into too much detail because I don't know what time this show's going out. But. <laughs> OK. Well, let's just talk about what you've been up to over the past couple of years. So, going back to 2010, mm-hmm. I think it was, wasn't it? So, you performed an impressive 18 gigs in seven days, travelling from John O'Groats to Land's End, and your wife recorded the whole thing on a handheld camera. Is that yep. right? Yep, that we only bought two days before filming. <laughs> <laughs> right, so why did you do that then? That's a good question. Still trying to come up with the answer to that. But, um, yeah, as I said, when I talked about Bill Coin earlier, he came in to contact me when I'd recorded a five-track acoustic demo, sent it to him, and he loved it, which was great. And we um, were obviously working together for about a year, and I thought, right, how can I impress this guy? Because Bill Coin, people will be familiar with Bill Coin, but in the 70s, he was the man that discovered Kiss, set Billy Idol's career off in America. And uh, what a lot of people don't know is he actually put a full Kiss tour on his American Express card so in order to impress Bill I thought right well what could I do to impress this guy you know and at that time money was a little tight to say the least me and Helen were actually at car boot sales on the weekends selling possessions for food so I'm the kind of struggling singer songwriter at that time so we thought, right, well, what could I do? Because I was getting a lot of attention at that time for my songs, and I thought, right, well, I can't afford to go on tour or hire booking agents and promoters and stuff, you know? So I thought, well, busking, that's easy, you know? But everybody can busk, so I thought, right, well, what, what could I do? And uh, at the time, as I said, the world was in a bit of a mess in 2010, you know? There was the, obviously the war in Afghanistan, the Iraq inquiry, and worst of all, the X Factor. So I thought, well, what could I do to get my music out there? And I, I knew I wouldn't do that. So, yeah, I sat down one Saturday night with a few beers and a map and I thought right well how could I plan this journey out because Helen had a week off work and I thought right well I've only got a week to do this so how many cities could I fit in in, in one week you know so I sat down with the map for about half an hour and then the more the, the drink was taking hold the more ambitious I got so I woke up on Sunday morning with an actual plan about what I was going to do and we thought right well we might as well film it you know just as a bit of a memory show the grandkids kind of thing you know so two days before filming we thought right we'll go out and get the camera and for anybody that watches the film you'll see how an amateur escapade it was because it was only the night before that I'd actually worked out where I was actually going to play in each city you know so yeah basically got up on the Sunday morning to head to John O'Groats which was what nearly 500 miles from Sunderland got there early afternoon tried to get some sleep and pretty much started the tour from midnight and John O'Groats playing to sheep <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of the footage and how often did you have to sleep in the car was it three nights we slept mm. in the car and basically just begged people to let us stay with them I mean I do have a few friends dotted around Britain and mm. uh, Helen had some family in London so basically we were just turning up and saying can we stay for the night you know <laughs> well, that's very passionate about your music there <laughs> Graham but I mean from this I bet you've got some great stories and experiences I mean have you got any that will entertain our Asda shoppers oh yeah we, uh, coincidentally this was before I was actually an Asda employee in Cardiff we got up early in the morning and went into performing Cardiff and it was about maybe 8 in the morning and we thought right where can we go for breakfast I was wanting to sample the delights of Cardiff City Centre but we were passing an Asda at the time well, Helen decided, as I say, compromised. <laughs> we were going to Asda. So there is footage of Asda in the actual film. So if anybody in Asda in Cardiff, I don't know the actual name of the store, but it's the one next to Cardiff 
City Football Stadium, but the staff there were featured in the canteen, <laughs> oh. uh, were featured in the film, so... Have a, have a watch. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. Well, I'm sure they'll remember you when they uh, hear this get broadcast out. So, how surprised were you when you found that you won a trophy for your film at the Barcelona International Film Festival? Well, if anybody's seen the film, I was very surprised. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I was passionate about when I made the film and, I mean, when I edited it on Windows Movie Maker because that's all I had. It is an amateur film. I mean, it never set out to be a Hollywood blockbuster. It just is what it is. It's real and it's just a video diary of somebody that did something kind of crazy, you know. So the surprise of the award, I did send it into three or four because they are quite expensive to enter them and there's really no guarantees whatsoever that you're yeah. even going to get an answer, never mind an award. So I can't remember when I actually entered it. It was earlier on this year and then I got an email through saying that it was announcing the winners and I thought, all right, well, I thought, well, if I've won anything, I'm pretty sure they would have contacted me direct. So I left it all day and I was actually doing a driving shift with Asda at the time and I was in uh, Lutterworth in Leicestershire one of the depots down there having my break I thought well I'll just click on this link and see who's won you know and I scrolled down and Castell award Graham Marshall and I was like eh so (laughs) so I phoned Helen to say can you double check this for me because I think I've won something here she did and phoned me back and she says yep it certainly looks like you've won something so I thought wow obviously you know it was more disbelief than anything else so I thought well I, I listened to the Janice Long show on BBC Radio 2 and I thought I'll just text her and see if she'll read the text out you know so I did and uh, when I was I pulled in to have a break on the way back up the road and honestly it was just pure coincidence that the phone went and I went mm. eh and I looked at the phone it was private number and this was like obviously after 12 midnight you know I was like what's this and it was Janice Long's producer saying we loved your award we loved the, the text we read out about your award that's brilliant news is there any chance you could come onto the show and talk about it and I thought well, yeah and I, th- I thought they were meaning like the next night and they said right hold the line I was like oh <laughs> so Janice Long come on and uh, chatted to her for about 10 minutes she obviously loved the story of it and uh, she asked me to if I had anything going with the music and I said well I'm actually releasing a single which is out now and she said oh send me it so I did and she played it two nights later so yeah well, <laughs> brilliant that is certainly one way of doing it and getting yourself on the radio within yeah. a matter of minutes yeah. so uh, how can people watch your film and download your single if they want to well the film is on YouTube it's called Out in the Cold yep you can view that for there and leave comment please any feedback's welcome because I'm hoping to get it onto the shelves someday but that takes a lot of money <laughs> okay. okay and what about the single the single is on iTunes Bandcamp Spotify any online retailer will have it I've also got the 10 Years Stuck in Traffic EP which was the original acoustic demo that I did for Bill Coin. It's actually got the acoustic version of Making It On My Own. But the single's actually been produced by Fernando Perdomo of Formal Forward Motion Records in LA. Both of us were on the roster at a Coin Globe with Bill Coin. But obviously, with Bill's passing, Bill's actually Bill passed a month after the tour ended in 2010. So obviously, that's why it's only really taken to now that I'm starting to pick up again because it's hard to do it on your own. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Hence the title is. of the, mm. the track, you know. So yeah, he did a great job of producing it. It's out now and people are loving it you know it's actually getting a lot of airplay at the minute and lots of radio stations worldwide so mm-hmm. this is another one to add to it <laughs> brilliant brilliant yes we'll be playing this very shortly so uh, also quickly do you have a Facebook or Twitter account people can follow you on I do Twitter is at G Marshall Music and I must stress that I'm very new to Twitter actually I mean I think I joined Twitter about two months ago when I got played in a French radio station on Sunday I think it was that was basically through Twitter so I thought right I'll go into Twitter and there was a lot of radio stations worldwide for following me so I thought oh, I better thank them and uh, I sent messages of thanks to myself <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow me on Twitter whether I get to read the message or not or please don't think I'm rude if I don't reply I've probably sent you the thank you to myself on Facebook which is pretty much where I do most of my promotion it's Graham Marshall Music on Facebook you can keep up to date on there with everything that's happening brilliant well thank you very much Graham for coming to speak to us oh, you're very welcome. We <laughs> thank you we wish you every success in uh, your road to start do you have anything you want to say to our Asda shoppers and your colleagues? Oh, buy my single. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, that was it, straight to the point. That's what we like. So thank you very much, Graham. And now we have Graham's new single to play, which is fittingly named Making It On My Own. And here it is. Thank you very much, Graham. Thank you. Has spilled on my shoes 
My speculation of adulation has gave me the blues. I woke this morning just to find that I'm yesterday's news. The illusion of my confusion. Why?